Welcome back to Plug and Play EV. I'm Steve, and in this one, you join me at a Flow Ultra station in Windsor, Vermont, one of the first in the country, as far as I can tell. And we're going to do a quick charge session on it. So let's take a look at the Flow Ultra at the Harpoon Brewery. So uh, right on the border with New Hampshire in Vermont and just south of an area called White River Junction, which people might be familiar with, and Lebanon, New Hampshire, where the border meets and there's a bunch of charging stations up there. But just a little further south here, you hit Windsor and uh, this is the Harpoon Brewery. We're at 61% state of charge, no preconditioning. It isn't super cold, but uh, we'll see how that goes. Not expecting any power records here, but want to get a session on, see what the interface looks like and what we might expect from these Flow Ultra stations in North America. So there is a version of the Flow app that you can use for Android Auto. You've got Green Mountain Power Windsor here, two of two CCS1 fast charging does cap out at 160 kilowatts it says uh, i'm not sure if that's dedicated on each one or if you could get 320 they are 320 kilowatt capable stations we'll take a look see what they say and uh, then try and activate it from the car here so it's saying this is number two said at the top there also a sticker let's activate that so it's let's see AI christmas so again, nearby stations, Green Mountain Power, number two. I did hear it activate right away. I'll read those in a sec here. And cable management up the top. So all very quick. We're starting the app, it says. Like quite a snappy UI, quite quick. Does say after plugging in your vehicle. Session details will be available. Probably got the order of operations wrong here. User error, maybe. But anyway, we can look in the app. We go to start. Not sure why it says insufficient funds when I just added funds. Okay, well, let's tap card and see how that goes. Maybe this will still show up in the app. We'll see. Big clunk in the background. Need a receipt, I guess so. SMS will be received once you finish your session. Pre-charge tests. That was pretty quick. Display here seems pretty clear, crisp, while still being not too huge. Gives you an indicator that all power is available. Maybe telling you that the vehicle's cold, but I do like the fact that it says what's requested via vehicle versus what's actually available here. And tells you how much is the max, so that could be useful in these colder months. Let's see if that ramps up a little bit. Again, it's uh, not preconditioned. I wouldn't have uh, blazed much of a trail here anyway with 160 kilowatts, but this is a nice alternative to the original flows, which are typically 100 kilowatts, 80 to 100 kilowatts, big blue units. Let's see what the car reports. I have charged faster earlier today but it has been cooling down for the last hour or two but uh, we'll see if it ramps up so it's actually a lot more compact than i thought it was looking in the uh, press shots kind of feels like a big unit but it's uh not really any wider than the arnic 5 if you look at the perspective once we get to here you can kind of shield it the arnic 5's off to the right of it a little bit if we'd centered it up, not that you would want to, because you're blocking two spaces then, you'd be uh, about the width of the Arnic 5. And 
it's maybe a little bit lower, but again, you can see height wise, really only maybe five foot, five foot something, five, yeah. So you're presented with the flow screen, first of all, you'd want to plug in, then you've got pricing, which is nice and cheap. Join flow for free with the QR code, track charging sessions, blah, blah, blah. Very, very good. Not much else. Your power online up there, more QR codes for in case this is out. Station ID up here, number to call, all your assistance, numbers, that kind of thing. Credit card readers and Nyax. Illuminated port. Let's look at what this actually says here. Flow Easy Lift cable system is undergoing calibration. If it does not extend or retract, please do not use force. Call blah 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 for assistance. Okay, so that's about the size of it. What's that? Got to be 10 feet at least. And I don't know how much more you'd get out of the retraction, but it's a nice looking unit. You can certainly hear the fans in there going to work for what is quite a compact unit, but it's not super noisy either. Okay, so worth staying on because that did prove that it kicked up. That's actually not behavior that I'm used to with the Ionic 5. Usually I would see it start at maybe 60, 70 kilowatts, then uh, hold that for a while, crank up to 110, 120 once it's a bit warmer, and then go to its full work. After that, it started more like 40, 45, and then cranked up to just below 100. But so doing it all kinds of backwards here, reaching our max for the session just before we start to taper. I think I was up to 137 I recorded there. No, 134, there you go. That is a nice little thing as well to let you know the max that you hit during the session, right on the screen. But that will start to crumble back down now beneath 100. But still emphasizes how good the Ionic 5 can be and the EGMP platform even uh, cracking past 100 at close to 80%. Don't think it's gonna crater because the Korean Siesta is more for heat, I'm still convinced, than anything else. But we'll watch it because it's actually pretty cheap. 35 cents per kilowatt hour is definitely the, the lower end of DC fast charging prices. You can see it says, please consider stopping your session. That's the kind of 80% mark, that's the station, rather than my vehicle because it's getting a lot more than it was at the start of the session. But you can tell they've programmed in some uh, language to when you get to 80% tell the user to consider moving but it's a thoughtful little piece glad I stayed past that um, but it's quite nice it's a neat little unit you know you've got the full halo light it's telling you this one's available clearly green for go blue is energizing and charging whatever EV parking only you could paint the stalls but this is a bit of a mud lot so Probably the bollards and the signage are the best hope there. This is the Harpoon Brewery. There are other things here. So I'll have to look, take a look around once I've done charging, see what's what. But you can see a bunch of stuff. So daytime, this will be fine. Nighttime, I'm guessing this is not particularly well lit. You can see lights over there, but that's about it. This would give you some ambient light from the charger itself, but uh, a little bit remote, but then you are up in the hills. This is into the uh, mountainous area, or coming onto the mountainous area of the Green Mountains and the White Mountains in New Hampshire and Vermont. Okay, so let's go ahead and stop it up. And get a confirmation. Do you sure? Yes, I am. And then again, fairly clear signage saying, please unplug. A little thank you. I think that's the cable management going to work. It is, looks like it's an automated system. Didn't realize that before. There's definitely something kind of automating itself in there. Must be counterweighted to know how much it needs to recline and then all the way back up. So you can see you've got a little more lighting around it now, whereas this one doesn't have anything. So I'm not sure how long that'll last. Session was finished about a minute ago, so we'll have a quick look at that in a sec here. But uh, it's interesting that that lights up 
maybe so you can have a bit of lighting to finish it. As I say, there's not much lighting. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> okay. So I got up to 85% in no time at all. Did start from a decent high of uh, 61 though, so not no great shakes there. Um, so it's a useful little spot. And Harpoon Brewery is obviously a little bonus if uh, I go in there and take a look. But um, the only thing I'd say here, aside from maybe the lighting, is you're not really going to get any uh, amenities probably after hours once you get past that kind of whatever the opening hours of the brewery are. This is going to be a kind of desolate place. So maybe one for the daytime and the summer holidays, but uh, I've been to worse and it's uh, at least a nice new station and some good power to get us back into the upper part of the pack.